Hi there, and welcome to this video. Here we have a Plex server running on a Raspberry Pi. Nothing too unusual about that, though running on an older Raspberry Pi 3B. But not only are we able to play a movie through the HDMI cable to the screen, but at the same time stream wirelessly to other devices such as this laptop and iPad at the same time. This is made possible because not only is the Raspberry Pi a Plex server, but also a wireless access point transmitting its own SSID. You can be away on vacation watching a movie through the HDMI cable on a TV and your kids streaming to their phones or tablets wirelessly, keeping everyone happy, especially on rainy days. Want to see how it's done? Well, let's take a look. First, you'll need a Raspberry Pi, a Pi 3, or better still, a Pi 4, an SD card, power supply, a USB stick, or in my case, an external hard drive to store your media, You'll also need a USB keyboard and mouse for the initial setup. Next, we need to prepare the SD card and install a Raspbian OS. We're going to use the GUI version to make it easier to access Plex through the HDMI to a TV or a monitor. Download the Raspberry Pi imaging utility, link in the description. I'll be using the Windows version. Download and install and then you get this little screen. Choose the OS. We'll use the desktop version and then choose the storage. That'll be your SD card. We're going to click on the settings. We'll set a host name. We'll call this PlexPi. We'll enable SSH. We'll give it a username of PlexPi and set a password. Set your local settings. I'll use London GB. Hit save. Click on write and then confirm that you're happy to overwrite the SD card. This will then write the OS to the SD card and it just takes a few minutes. Once it's finished writing to the SD card, click continue, remove the SD card from your computer, place it into the Raspberry Pi and power the Pi on. Once the Raspberry Pi has booted up, we need to find the IP address. We can find that in two ways. The first way is we can plug the HDMI cable into the Raspberry Pi and we'll be able to see the IP address displayed on the screen. The second way is through the internet router you have. We'll log into that and there will be a LAN section that will tell you the IP address. For example, this one's mine, 192. 168078. Now that we know the IP address, we can open a command prompt and connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. Type in SSH space plex pi at 192.168.0.78. We'll type in yes at the prompt. We'll enter the password we set up earlier. Now we need to update the Pi. sudo apt update. Once complete, we'll do an upgrade. sudo apt upgrade. Enter. Now this will take a little while. We'll say yes to the prompt. Now that the upgrade is finished, we can start the setup for Plex. And in order to download the repositories for Plex, we need this command. Select yes to any prompts. And 
that's complete. We can now download the Plex repositories. Now that's done, we can do another sudo apt update. to bring in those repositories. When that's done, we can now install Plex. Once the install has been completed, we can check the status of the Plex Media Server. And here we can see it's active and running. We can now move to a web browser. And from here, we can type in the IP address of the Plex Pi, 192.168.0.72. Then a colon, 32400, which is the Plex port, forward slash web. Hit enter. This takes us to our Plex Pi, and we'll log in with our username and password. not going to sign up for a Plex Pass right now. We'll accept the name, Plex Pi. I don't want it accessible outside. Hit next. I'm not going to add a media library just yet. Hit next. And then done. And here's a functioning Plex server. Next, we'll start the configuration of the access point. And we'll go back to the command prompt. And we just need to install a couple of applications. We need DNS mask and host APD. So we'll just install those. Now that they're installed, we're just going to stop those services so that we can make alterations to the configuration files. First file we'll configure is the dhcpd.conf. And we just need to add a few lines at the end. So we'll just use nano on this. Add these lines, hit Control and O, to write out the file and enter, and then control X to save and exit. We'll restart the DHCPD service. Try that again. There we go, that's better. Now we're going to configure the DHCP for the access point. We'll make a backup copy of the original config file and we'll create a new file. Here we see the IP range of 192.168.4.10 to 192.168.4.25. That should give us enough leases for our wireless devices. Control O to write out the file and Control X to exit. Now that's done, we can start the DNS mask service. Now we want to configure the access point. Here it shows the SSID we'll be using, which is Plex PI AP. We're on channel nine, and at the moment I'm using password one, two, three, 
for authentication. Please use something a little bit stronger than that. I'm just using this for test purposes. So write out the file, control O, enter, control X to exit. We're now going to edit the host APD file. We want to scroll down to this line with the daemon.conf. And we're going to delete the contents of that line and paste in a new line. Control O, enter and exit. We now need to configure traffic forwarding. Scroll down until you see this line, net IPv4 IP underscore forward equals one. Remove the hash in front, save the file and exit. We now need to install IP tables. and IB tables persistent. Hit yes for both the prompts. We'll use this command to configure routing. We'll then save the configuration, followed by this command. Now, reboot. Once the Pi is restarted, we'll load up the command prompt again and connect to the Pi, SSH, space, your username at your IP address, type in your password. Now there's three more commands we need to use to get the access point working and visible as a wireless access point. One, two, and last one. And reboot again. Once the Raspberry Pi is rebooted, SSH into the Pi as before, and at the command prompt, type ifconfig. From here, you'll be able to see the IP addresses that have been aligned with the interfaces on the Raspberry Pi. The one that we're interested in here is the WLAN or wireless LAN, which is set to 192.168.4.1. This is what we configured earlier. And if you go to a wireless device, a tablet or a laptop, and go into the wireless configuration, you'll be able to see that the Plex Pi AP that we configured earlier is now listed and available for us to connect to. Now that Plex and the access point are running, we need to add some media into Plex. I've got a USB two and a half inch drive plugged into the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to mount that and also make that connection persistent so that when we reboot the Raspberry Pi, the data will still show and the media will still be available in Plex. So to start with, we'll add a folder into the mount directory that we are going to link to the media on the USB hard drive. We'll set some permissions for that folder. And if we do df space minus h, we'll be able to see on slash dev slash sda1 is my Seagate external hard drive. By using sudo blkid slash dev slash sda1, we will see the UUID, which we will need in order to set up the persistent connection for the external hard drive. So make a note of this UUID and then proceed with the next command, where we will <laughs> not do that. We'll edit FS tab and we'll use this command. Here you see the UUID that we listed earlier. 
and we're mounting it to slash MNT slash media. Now my drive is formatted with NTFS and you can leave these other commands as they are. Save the file and exit. And now do a reboot. Now that the Pi has restarted again, we can log in to SSH once more and just check that the Plex Media server is running with the sudo systemctl status Plex Media server. That's active and running. So now we can go to our web browser and type in the IP address of the Pi colon 32400 forward slash web. And from here, we can add our libraries. Hit the plus next to the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to add some films. Hit next. We'll browse to find our media. In this case, for me, it's in media, media, and films. Select add and add library. And within a short space of time, it should import the media into the Plex Media Library. And there we go. Media now ready to be accessed either through the HDMI cable to a screen of your choosing or through the wireless access point. One additional step is required if you're going to be using the access point to stream content. Here I've logged into the Plex Media Server Management Console through the local IP address and I'm going to go into Settings. I'm going to scroll down on the left and click on Network. I'm then going to click Show Advanced and then scroll down where you have list of IP addresses and networks that are allowed without auth. Click in this box, add in your local IP address for your Plex Media server. So in my case, 192.168.4.1 forward slash 24. Scroll down to the bottom and save changes. I hope this video has been interesting and helpful and thank you for watching.